Many of us grew up in a society where the dominant religion taught that there was something called a final judgment, the final tallying up as to your value as a person. And no matter how harsh the judgment might be, you had to accept it as just. We see the influence of that in our society, even in areas that are secular. I was reading the other day that there's a theory that the whole purpose of the judicial system is to arrive at final judgments. Now, whether they are fair or not, just or not, doesn't matter. But they wanted to make sure that a judgment once arrived at was not questioned. In other words, we have a finality system, not a judicial system. Another influence we have is feelings of unworthiness and thinking that feelings of unworthiness are spiritually a good thing. Because after all, if a final judge comes and says, okay, eternal damnation, we have to have a strong sense of our unworthiness to think that that could be possibly just. Now, many of us. And many of us have rejected that religion precisely for these reasons, but often it still sloshes around in our minds. And somehow a sense of unworthiness could be spiritually advanced. It gets in the way of the practice. Remember the Buddha's words for his teaching, instruction, encouragement, arousing, urging. The whole point of the teaching is to get people confident that, yes, this is something they can do, no matter what your past may be. Your mind can change very fast. As the Buddha said, nothing can change as quickly as the mind. There's no analogy that he could give for how quick the mind is to change its course. Now, that can be a negative thing, but it can also be a positive thing. When you have a good change of heart, Realizing that your past may be bad. You either have done bad things in the past, or your past attempts at doing something good, something difficult, have met in failure. That doesn't mean that that's the way it always has to be. There is no final judgment in Buddhism. The only thing that's final is Nibbana. Think about that. Finality here is ultimate happiness. Up until that point, your judgments are the judgment of a crass person. You judge how you're doing, and if there's anything you see that you could improve, you try to improve it. But the purpose of the judgment is not to discourage you. It's not to come to a final judgment. Even when you've finished, say, a chair, or a table, or a dish. That's not the final table, chair, or a dish. You look at what you've done and you ask yourself, how could this be improved? This is probably why the Buddha said that that luminous quality of the mind is what allows us to train the mind, because we can't look at our actions and the results of our actions and see where they're lacking. And when we see where they're lacking, we don't stop there. We try to figure out, well, how can you improve it the next time around? So you've got to bring this attitude to the meditation, that regardless of your past, there is the possibility of learning a skill. Our educational system sometimes doesn't encourage this, it tends to channel people into areas where they're already talented. As we saw, we don't have much practice in developing skill in areas where we're not naturally talented. But you can learn how to learn. Think of all those analogies that a John Lee gives, learning how to sew a pair of pants, learning how to weave a basket, learning how to make clay tiles, learning how to make things out of silver. 
These are ongoing processes. And as any cross person will tell you, you can keep on getting better. And we all have this potential. Think of the story of Angulimala. He killed all those people. And if he hadn't had a change of heart, he would have gone to a bad destination. But he did have a change of heart. He realized that he was going along the wrong way, and he could change. This is why that ability of the mind to change direction is so important, and why confidence is such an important part of the path. The word for confidence, basada, relates to the quality of a clear, cool lake. Clear, bright. You have those moments of clarity where you can see that, yes, this is possible. Yes, I have been doing things wrong in the past. But having an attitude of unworthiness is not going to help. When the Buddha was teaching, it was always to give people the encouragement that, yes, they could do this. Now, when some of his monks were misbehaving, he would call them worthless. Mokha Bodhisattva was the term. Worthless person, empty person. But that was not meant to be a final judgment. It was meant to get them to reflect on their actions and to see what could be changed. Even the story of Devadatta, who tried to destroy the Sangha. He's going to suffer for a long time, but it's not an endless suffering. There's always a way out. Even Mara is supposed to eventually become a private Buddha. So this is a story in which even the bad guys get their redemption. You're not nearly as bad as they are. So there's hope for you as well. So feelings of unworthiness are not encouraged in this tradition. In fact, they're seen as defilements. Because we're not groveling in front of a larger power that we hope to please. It hopes that our display of our own sense of unworthiness will bring about a sense of pity. We have to look at what we have as in terms of our own resources. Think of a John Fuhr. Orphaned, didn't do well at school, didn't have any particular talents. He said that as he reached about the age of 16, he began to reflect on his life to see that it was not going in a good direction. That what he needed was some good karma, and he didn't have much in his past, at least as far as he could see, that he could build on. But he could build on his determination now that he wanted to learn, and confidence that he could learn. That's why he ordained. And that's why when he ordained in a village monastery, he grew disappointed with what he was getting as a training and kept looking. Until John Lee came to town. When he found that John Lee, he knew he'd found what he wanted, the opportunity that he wanted, and he went for it. And whatever the difficulties, whatever the problems, hardships, he was up for them. That was the attitude that saw him through, and that's an attitude we can all develop. The Buddha wasn't always the Buddha. You look at the Jataka tales, and the times when he made lots of mistakes. But that didn't prevent him from learning from his mistakes and having the confidence that, yes, supreme awakening was something he could do. So we're living in a different world frame here as we practice. Finality is not final judgment. As when you see those murals some beings are cast down to hell and they're going to stay there forever. 
Finality is Nibbana. All kinds of people have made their way there. And you can make your way there too. <laughs> 